As business moved towards reopening during the coronavirus pandemic, we all must develop plans to ensure the safety of our customers and employees. The uh, combination of AI-based technologies and smart perimeter security helps monitor how vis visitors are maintaining distance from one another and uh, wearing face masks properly. This in addition to identifying individuals with elevated body temperature to make sure they receive assistance as they enter facilities. Thanks everyone for joining today's uh, webinar co-sponsored by CyberLink and VivoTech. My name is Jay Chang, the uh, VP of Business Development here at, at CyberLink. I will be facilitating the session today. Um, we will have three presenters. Um, they will each come up to present the solutions that two companies have uh, joined forces and created solutions uh, for smart security um, and also visitor management and uh, also contactless access control. They will also demonstrate these solutions and illustrate their deployment through a number of uh, use cases. Uh, as far as the process goes, uh, we, will get, we will get them to introduce themselves first. Um, we, will, uh, we will have to go through their presentations. Uh, we will save the last uh, 10 minutes uh, of our session for a uh, live Q&A. Um, in the meantime, feel free to enter any questions you have in the Q&A chat session uh, of the uh, of your go to go go to webinar panel, um, and uh, and we will also we have actually uploaded a handout which also includes our uh, contact information in case you would like to reach us after today's session. Um, at the moment, let me just uh, go around the room um, and have our panelists uh, introduce ourselves. Uh, let's start uh, with uh, Richard. Hi, everyone. I'm Richard Carrier. I'm a SVP and General Manager at CyberLink. Um, Alan, please. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Director of Sales for VivaTech USA, which includes uh, all of the U.S., Canada, and Puerto Rico, based out of San Jose. Archie, please. Hi, uh, my name is Archie or Archimedes Mandap. I'm one of the business development managers here at uh, VivoTech USA, which covers the US and Canada. I work on special projects, which includes uh, working with our technology partners, such as CyberLink, and um, developing mutually beneficial solutions through hardware and software integration. And we also have uh, Craig Campbell. Hi, Craig Campbell, Manager for Sales Engineering at CyberLink. I will handle the chat, so please bring out your questions and I will pass them on to the panel. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction. So we'll first uh, have Richard, uh, you know, come up and then talk about the uh, technologies that CyberLink has uh, put together for the pandemic. Thank you, Richard. Let me tell you about FaceMe and our partnership with VivoTech. So first, what is CyberLink FaceMe? It is the world's top cross-platform AI facial recognition engine. According to NIST, it offers an accuracy rate of 99.7%, which places it in the top five in the world when you exclude a few providers from countries like Russia and China that cannot really compete on a global scale. Uh, in addition to accuracy, the fact that it runs at the edge uh, makes it very secure, extremely fast compared to cloud solutions. We're talking about a few milliseconds versus several seconds for facial recognition. Also, it's optimized to run across platforms. So whether you have a single platform deployment or a legacy deployment requiring several platforms, it can all talk together. So we support Windows, Android, iOS, Jetson, several flavors of Linux. And it's also designed uh, for uh, several kinds of hardware, whether you're talking about PCs, industrial uh, workstations and servers, IoT devices with small uh, chipsets and processing power, uh, or mobile devices. We have several models, several versions of our SDK that uh, enable a perfect balance between accuracy, speed, uh, power requirements. So uh, works in pretty much any setup. What are the features of CyberLink FaceMe? Uh, first one is face detection. So are there people and how many people are there in front of a camera? Face recognition when connected to a database uh, with uh, identification for people, you can recognize people. Face attributes, we can identify key demographic data for statistics or 
analysis of personalization, such as gender, gender, age, mood, the angle of the head as well. So in contactless solutions, people can nod or shake their head to answer questions in a contactless way. Uh, we also have image pre-processing technologies called True Theater that are very relevant to enhance uh, image quality uh, uh, depending on poor lighting conditions or a lack of resolving cameras, so it can minimize, minimize any kind of bias. FaceMe also includes 2D and 3D entice proofing technology, so you cannot flash a picture or a video of someone. It really needs to be a real person in front of a camera. And finally, we recently added, in light of the COVID pandemic, mass detection and recognition of people wearing masks. So basically, we can detect if you wear a mask properly and identify people even if they have a mask. Let me show you a quick uh, video describing FaceMe. Now I will present you two of our horizontal solution, one around security and the other one around COVID-19. After that, I'll uh, describe a few industry vertical specific use cases where FaceMe com combined with Vivotech cameras can provide a lot of value. First, FaceMe Security. FaceMe Security is a software that can be bundled with computers and Vivotech cameras and uh, as an all-in-one set of features to monitor securities in facilities. So you, it's extremely scalable. You can have uh, several hundred uh, Vivotech IP cameras in a facility or across many facilities, and it scales up with no problem. Uh, average uh, location that would require potentially 300 cameras for, let's say, an industrial plan, all you would need is two decent workstations with GPU or VPU acceleration. Here you go. You put FaceMe security software at the edge on the device. You have a central uh, server that can be on-premise or at the headquarters to manage enrollment for people, to uh, manage the different setup and uh, manage security alerts. Then from there, we can send personalized alerts. Let's say you have Somebody who's a visitor, you want to notify uh, their host. Somebody who's on a block list should not be there. You can identify authorities. Uh, we also have features that can identify somebody showing up not wearing a mask properly on their face uh, or an unknown person. Or for employees, you can even use it as a clock, a time clock uh, device. Here's a video. It's private Okay, now let's talk about our other software called FaceMe Health. And this one is very interesting because it's a solution that can run as a standalone or as an add-on to FaceMe Security. And same idea, all you have to do is install it on workstations, connect cameras like the VivoTech camera, and we're equipped to detect if somebody is wearing a mask, wearing them properly over their face. We can do face recognition of people wearing a mask with an accuracy level of up to 95%, which is more than enough in most cases. And if you integrate a thermal camera, you can also 
connect somebody's uh, body temperature with an individual. So if somebody has elevated body temperature, uh, they can be uh, met by someone at the facilities who can make sure that uh, everybody stays healthy. Here's how it works. Now let me go over a few use cases that uh, would integrate our SDK. So not necessarily face me health or face me security, but our SDK in a set of uh, IoT deployments. So in commercial and office buildings, you can integrate it to the visitor management system. So pre-registered visitors can be greeted by their hosts or directed where they need to go. Even if there's no live person to interact with, it can do access control to different doors and areas across the facility. It can do time and attendance for employees all in a uh, contactless way, just them walking through the door. Uh, it can ensure building security and for the entire perimeter and also integrate health screening. All that in one touchless, uh, unintrusive experience. Uh, when you bring it to airport and transportations, we have deployments uh, that can enable airport surveillance overall. Uh, you can uh, be there at security checkpoints to identify uh, people, make sure the health is there, uh, can do access control to the limited and restricted areas, the airport. Uh, you can uh, power self-service kiosks that can be completely contactless. Uh, in the case of transportation in buses or trains, it can ensure driver and passenger safety and we can integrate the full health screening that you saw with FaceMe Health. Residential complexes, perimeter surveillance is a big deal, on-premise security as well. Uh, it can fully automate access control in a contactless way. And once somebody walked in the facilities, it can direct them to the right place. It can even set the elevator to go to the right floor and unlock the door of their apartment units can do the same thing with pre-registered visitors. And also it can send alerts if there are any intruders or people who should not be there. Also very important in uh, schools and uh, higher education campuses for security around the campus, on premise, same thing, visitor management, students, faculty. A lot of people go in these places, make sure that only the right people uh, can have access, control access to different areas, make sure it monitors alerts. So it could be anyone who should not be there and also perform health screenings that are critical right now to reopening schools and campuses. Manufacturing and warehouses. These are very large complex facilities that have indoor, outdoor areas. Sometimes it can be several uh, buildings, even in several facilities. So. An installation that is powered by FaceMe and could integrate the VivoTech camera can take care of everything from overall access control to the site, inside the site, visitor management. There's lots of visitors who go to these uh, sites. Same thing for people who do delivery at checkpoints, making sure people come in with their truck, direct them to the right place where they need to go, but also make sure they come out after a certain time. Uh, it's good for on-premise security intruder alerts. Uh, an important one is machinery equipment sign-in. So it can monitor who is using different pieces of machinery and equipment for how much time. So this is good for health and safety. This is good 
for to ensure only authorized access uh, happens, and also to track in the case of mobile equipment, who is using it at which point. Now add to that health screening. Uh, it's Right now it's a big issue to make sure that social distancing, people wear their masks throughout the facilities, uh, and uh, there's no elevated body temperature. And uh, these are all things that can be integrated into one system pretty easily. You can even retrofit, in many cases, uh, existing systems just by installing our SDK with the software, adding some proper cameras uh, where it's needed. Now, retail hospitality, also very important right now, health screening, so whether it's a health kiosk uh, or, a, uh, or an integrated system, uh, for loyalty programs in a contactless uh, mandatory situation right now in many hotels, restaurants, people can go at self-service kiosks, automatically be identified as member of loyalty, but also when the world becomes more normal, just the uh, camera at the entrance can uh, notify employees of somebody who's member of loyalty programs. Obviously, that would require that the member accepts to enroll their pictures, but typically for the right perks and VIP treatment, a lot of people will do that. You can also personalize advertisement based on who's looking at a digital sign or kiosk. It can help to do transaction authentication in a contactless way or cardless way. Uh, it can help self-check-in, self-checkout, monitor access to the places that are accessible only to employees, and also help fraud alert and loss prevention. So there it is. In conclusion, FaceMe offers a complete set of solutions. So we have cutting edge security COVID-19 solutions available, but beyond security, health and safety, we can also provide amazing new contactless user experiences, especially in hospitality, restaurants, retails right now that are suffering. Being able to create these compelling experiences will bring a lot of value. Uh, FaceMe security, FaceMe health software are channel ready and they fully support VivoTech IP cameras. So all you have to do is add proper server and any IT department in a company can get going. Uh, we have an SDK that's very accurate, flexible, provides low cost and secure uh, facial and biometric identification. And this is for any edge deployment. And finally, our solution is very easy to integrate into IoT solutions due to the flexibility. So with that, I thank you very much for your attention, and uh, I hope uh, you will be interested. Please contact us uh, to have information about uh, evaluation version of the software or just in general about the products. Thanks, Richard, for sharing great information on Cyberlinks innovations and technologies and its relationship with VivoTech that the two companies are working together to provide a easily deployable solution for various verticals. Uh, next up, we have our friends from VivoTech. Let me just pass it on to them so then they can give you a more in-depth information about how the two companies work together and how VivoTech's cameras and technologies are also supported by Cyberlink. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alan Green and I'm the Director of Sales for VivoTech USA. Uh, VivaTech USA being part of VivaTech Global. Um, I'm responsible for the business in North America being the US, Canada, and Puerto Rico. Uh, my role here today is to talk to you about VivaTech as a company, give you a brief overview on who we are and what we do, and then turn it over to the team to talk about uh, the partnership with Cyberlink for their FaceMe facial recognition software and how that will integrate to our VAST2 video platform. So with that, VivaTech, if you're not familiar with us as a company, um, basically VivaTech stands for the Convergence of Video, Voice, and Communication Technology. We started as a true IP camera company back in uh, 2000, and uh, we are celebrating our 20th anniversary year, but what has changed over those 20 years is that as an IP camera company, and again, we were true from the ground up, we were not a legacy video analog company, uh, we actually were manufacturing IP cameras from the ground up. Today, we are selling and providing intelligent video solutions and everything that goes along with that. So not only the cameras, but also the recording devices, the networking devices, and the software head-ends. Uh, again, a true video surveillance company today. 
again mentioned that we were founded in 2000. Uh, we've been publicly traded since 2006 on the Taiwan Stock Exchange, although we are part of a larger uh, global entity by the name of Delta Electronics or Delta Group of Companies. We are still publicly traded today on the on the stock exchange with uh, over 1,100 plus global employees for VivaTech alone. Um, from that standpoint, much of that is uh, headquartered in Taiwan uh, from the standpoint of uh, very being very engineering driven, but again, 100 plus in global employees, uh, including all the subsidiaries and sales teams and everything that are out in the world supporting the, the various customer bases. On that note, we are actually operating in 116 different countries through 183 different distributor uh, partners. So we are represented very heavily in, in the majority of the world at this point in time. Um, but with that being a global manufacturer, Security Top 50, if you're not familiar with that ranking, uh, Security Top 50 has uh, published the top 50 global manufacturers of security products every year for a number of years now. And we've been very fortunate to uh, be consistently ranked in the top 20 uh, this year or this past year in 2019, we were ranked number 18. So again, uh, that is a total security ranking for global manufacturers. That's not just video surveillance. So we're very, uh, very happy and proud to be included in that ranking. Um, as I've mentioned a couple of times, we are based out of Taiwan. We are not a Chinese manufacturer. Um, and for all the things that it brings with that these days, we are a true OEM manufacturer. This is our product, our design, our engineering, our manufacturing. This is not us putting our name on somebody else's product. And uh, therefore, we do not have any of the, the Chinese concerns that are involved in today's TAA and NDAA bans. We are um, a compliant company um, building out of a out of uh, Taiwan. So in the US, we are headquartered in San Jose, California. Uh, all of our inventory, all of our tech support, everything is uh, is supported out of that office. And that again is uh, responsible for US, Canada, and Puerto Rico. As I mentioned, 20 years, um, 20 years of reliability in this case. Um, what that means to me is that uh, we build a very good product and we're not ever gonna embarrass anyone. Um, we basically have a less than 1% global failure rate. Uh, we make tremendous products and, um, you know, try to bring a lot of value to that product by way of price points and technology and things like that. But 20 years of reliability, reliability down the road, we do have a very robust product offering. Um, I won't beat up the Taiwan piece again, but uh, today what we're focused on is trying to become the I in the IoT. You know, everybody talks about the Internet of Things and IoT. You know, what our specialty is is the camera. So what we want to be is we want to be that image recognition, image uh, acquisition device to be able to take and capture, view, transmit, whatever the case may be, video surveillance, intelligent video surveillance for application-driven uh, needs. Uh, AI is one of those things that we all talk about a lot these days, and what has changed over time is that we've gone from pixel-driven motion detections and things like that to being uh, AI or artificial intelligence-driven today, uh, you know, uh, constantly learning and analyzing the video streams to be able to do different things with it, not the least of which is going to be facial recognition. Um, we do that, however, through a vertical market-driven focus. Uh, we take in, you know, globally uh, focus on certain markets like transportation and, um, you know, retail, things like that. In North America, I have our team also focused on healthcare and uh, education as well as smart cities. And we're taking, trying to take and, uh, you know, fit together the pieces of the puzzle to bring you as a, as a partner base um, that, uh, that solution that will help uh, satisfy your customers' needs. Um, we also do that with an eye on cybersecurity. Cybersecurity means uh, not only you know stronger passwords and things like that these days, but we also have um, you know partnered with uh, Trend Micro, and we've been on the bleeding edge of that technology curve for several years now, where we actually have Trend Micro software residing on our cameras at the edge in order to provide a very secure solution. So not only through the devices, um, but back to your network and everything else we're pushing cybersecurity out to the edge. I mentioned being the eye in the IoT, uh, again, with a vertical focus, these are several different markets, but one of the things that you'll notice is security or video surveillance is common to all of them. 
Um, it gets used in different ways on transportation than maybe it does in a smart city or in a retail environment. But video surveillance is common to all of them. And one of the things that's becoming common to all the video surveillance is now facial recognition. So again, this kind of ties it all together with what we're going to be talking about today and what this partnership brings. As for the VivaTech portion of it, we are a full video surveillance manufacturer, as I mentioned, uh, which means that we have cameras in all shapes and sizes and uh, resolutions for pretty much any need that you could possibly have. Uh, but we also take and bring those cameras back into a variety of devices and software platforms all the way up through VAST2, which is what we're going to focus on today. VAST2 is, again, our video management software piece of the puzzle. Uh, this is uh, the VMS that you often hear about, talked about in the marketplace. You may also hear it referred to as a CMS. Uh, the primary difference between CMS and VMS is just the way that it handles uh, different features within the software itself. But the general gist of it all is, is that you've got a number of cameras deployed out in the world, and you want to basically bring them back to a central site to manage them, uh, to review for incidents, to look at live situations, uh, to do you know data research for uh, whatever it may be from a business intelligence standpoint. So all of those things, basically, you've got the cameras out on the edge. They're coming back through the network to a recording device of some level and then managed by the software, which in our case is VAST2 and the platform that we're talking about today. Last but not least, the thing that I want to kind of mention to you in VAST2 uh, before Archie gets into the details on how it interfaces with the CyberLink program or platform and the FaceMe program, um, is that VAST2 itself from a VMS standpoint is very cost effective. Um, we do not uh, try to take uh, the traditional software model and and uh, just add fees on top of fees, but we really have a very robust, very simple, cost-effective piece of uh, software uh, that has a, you know, a very simple licensing structure. Uh, the first 32 cameras coming into a video into a VAST server are free. Um, anything above that 32 cameras is a one-time camera license. So if you add 33 cameras to a video server, uh, the first 32 are free. You're paying for one license beyond that. Um, if you bring them in through one of our NVRs, um, as you'll see in the top of the diagram, uh, the, that licensing structure is all taken care of in the box itself. So therefore, uh, you may have 32 cameras on the video server and another 16 coming in through a remote NVR. Uh, you're not having any licensing fees at all to pay from a simple standpoint that licensing is built into the NVR. Same thing with VAS2 as a substation. And then the bottom is basically showing just cameras coming back to the head end itself. Uh, last but not least, we also don't charge any annual maintenance fees. So again, one-time licensing, first 32 free, uh, built into the NVRs and a very simple structure to work with, very cost effective, but yet a very robust piece of software. So with that, I'm going to say thank you and turn it over to Archie uh, to kind of talk about the fast 2 and how it fits together with the CyberLink uh, FaceMe recognition software platform. Thank you for your time. Have a great day. Thank you, Alan, and thank you everyone for joining the webinar. Once again, my name is Archimedes Spandap, and today I will be presenting the facial recognition solution that we developed in cooperation with CyberLink. In this presentation, I'll provide a quick overview where I cover the hardware and software pieces that make up this solution, explain how FaceMe Security integrates with VAST2, and then illustrate how the entire solution work. And lastly, I'll talk about how this smart security solution provides additional functionality in VAST2 that are useful in addressing many of the use cases and scenarios that Richard mentioned in his presentation. There are three main components that make up this integrated solution. We have the VivoTech network cameras that act as the image capture device. We have VAST2 in the middle, which is our video management software that handles the management of the IP cameras in the network. This is also where the captured video from the cameras can be viewed, uh, recorded, and played back. And also VAST2 handles um, all the uh, data that's coming from an, an external source or third party in this case, uh, data that's coming from FaceMe security. 
And lastly, we have the facial recognition software, which um, consists of FaceMe Security Workstation and FaceMe Security Central. So both um, the VAST2 and FaceMe Security software can be installed on a single server, but they, uh, they can also be installed and ran on, on separate servers. So this provides uh, flexibility as well as scalability. So now let's take a look at how these two, uh, these three components interact with each other. So the VivoTech um, camera um, streams the video to VAST2 where it gets ingested and recorded. That video stream gets forwarded to security workstation where face detection and recognition is performed. And then any of the extracted information gets forwarded to Security Central where it's uh, where face match is performed against a, a, a database of faces. Security Central then generates some data points that gets forwarded to VAST2 to, to process. So let's take a look at those data points. Um, they consist of um, the name of the person uh, that, that was detected, the day and time that person was detected, um, the group that person belongs in. They can either be labeled as a VIP, an employee, a stranger, or if they're part of the, an, an authorized list, um, they'll be labeled as block list. And then finally, the location of the camera where that person um, was detected. Once um, those data points are generated, they then gets forwarded to VAS2 and ingested um, through VAS2's interface, which we call Data Magnet. Um, data Magnet uses the data points as alarm triggers when um, setting up um, alarm policies. And they're also used in, um, in, in generating a searchable database, which I will discuss later. Um, just so you know, we have an enhanced integration with CyberLink, uh, which uh, makes it easier to add cameras to FaceMe Security Central. Before, uh, you would have to input uh, the camera information uh, manually, the name, the location, and the RTSP uh, video stream address. But now, our integration, FaceMe Security Central, allows um, uh, a server connection with VAS2. So within Central, you, as you can see, um, you know, you, you basically just input the IP address of the VAS2 server and the credential, and then it generates all the cameras um, automatically below that's been set up for facial recognition. So there's no need to manually input the, the camera information anymore. Another thing that you can do in FaceMe uh, Security Central is the ability to turn on and off monitoring or, or facial recognition on those cameras within the console. So now that you have a, a general idea at how FaceMe integrates with VAST2, um, in the next couple of slides, uh, we'll take a closer look at the additional functionality that uh, facial recognition brings into our video management software and um, how this smart security solution can be used in several scenarios, applications, and verticals. In this slide, we have a screenshot of VAST2's live client. This is where camera video streams can be viewed um, in real time. And in this example, we have a person of interest that's in view. So now imagine this being in the retail environment and this person is about to enter a store. It just happens that this uh, guy has shoplifted before and his picture was enrolled into the FaceMe database. So now once he walks into the store, Live Client will immediately display the facial recognition data. The security staff can now study this and take a look and um, identify this guy to be a, a shoplifter. And as you can see, it shows that Cal belongs into the block list group, which means um, he's unauthorized and, and is not uh, allowed to enter the store. 
With this information, the security staff can uh, take immediate action and prevent a potential theft or loss to the store. Real-time monitoring and detection can also be used uh, differently in other scenarios besides catching bad guys or shoplifters. It can be utilized to recognize VIPs instead, very important people. As an example, in hotels, especially the ones that have customer loyalty programs, this feature can be utilized to immediately identify a guest that have an elite status with the hotel. And VAS2 can alert staff to immediately tend to that guest and provide them with the best possible customer service experience. In VAS2, the user can be alerted by creating an alarm policy and turning on alarm notification. So when a VIP hotel guest is identified, a notification will immediately show up on the upper right hand corner of Live Client. And if you click on the play icon, it will launch the video playback page, which will allow the user to review the video of when the person entered the hotel by using the playback timeline controls below. Fast2 has another helpful feature called EMAP or electronic map. That's a tool that help in providing situational awareness to the security staff, especially in an office building scenario. Uh, this feature allows the user to upload a picture or a map or in this example that we have here, we have a floor plan to represent a floor in an office building. Each camera icon represents the location of a physical camera on the floor and the direction it is pointing at. In this scenario, all four cameras have facial recognition enabled. And when you click on an icon, a live view feed opens up for that camera. With facial recognition, we are now able to roughly track a person's location and get an idea of their movement based on the location of the camera and the time they were detected. In this example, we have Min, who is an executive or a VIP located in the west wing of the floor, um, an employee nearby the janitor closet, and a stranger close to where the lobby is. The ability to track is very helpful especially when an unauthorized uh, individual enters the building. Um, an alarm policy can be set where EMAP can be triggered to automatically open in VAS2 and show on the floor plan the camera that detected the unauthorized person. Um, this then will give the security staff a general location where to look for the person. And in the example that I have, we have uh, a block list listed person whom at the time of detection was identified to be in the server room. So all the alarm rules for the different scenarios I talked about from the previous slides can be defined in the alarm management console of VAS2. In this page, you can use face me data points as the trigger to these alarms. In this alarm that I already created, I've set the trigger condition to detect VIPs that are entering a specific door on the sixth floor of a building where a camera is located. There are, there are several actions uh, that can be taken, like uh, start recording, send an email, launch, uh, launch EMAP. In this example, we've chosen to sound an alarm in which will play an audible sound in VAS2 when a, when a VIP is detected. The alarm can be scheduled to run at a specific day and time, um, but in this case, we have set it up to be always running. Here are more examples of alarm rules created in alarm management. Uh, the first one, alarm management is being used uh, to open a door. In theory, this is possible, by triggering the camera's digital output that's connected to a door relay. In this scenario, the door will only open when an authorized uh, person or employee is detected. On the second one, when a person that is uh, in the block list is detected, we can have VAS2 to perform multiple actions, such as send an email to security, have EMAP instantly pop up and show which camera detected the unauthorized person, as well as play an audible alarm on VAS2. 
basically this is a, a good example that um, that shows that you can stack up multiple actions. On this last one, VAS2, uh, we'll basically start recording and bookmark uh, a 10 second video clip when a stranger is detected. VAS2 also has an alarm list page where you can search and find all the trigger, triggered alarms. Once you find the alarm you're interested in, you can click on the play icon to review it. As I mentioned earlier, Data Magnet uses the FaceMe data points to build a database of all the faces detected and recognized. The user can then go back in time and perform a search based on the search criteria. The screenshot that I have here shows the Data Magnet search page in VAS2 and um, the result of a query. And in this example, we are asking Data Magnet to search for all the employees recognized under group between August 13 and August 21. By the way, as a side note, you can also search for name and data source, which is the camera location under search criteria. The result then generates a chart showing the number of employees recognized for each day on that time frame, as well as the grand total. And in this case, Data Magnet found 1,903 entries in its database. Right below the chart is a table that contains the entries of all the recognized employees. Each row represents a person recognized with the FaceMe data points associated to that individual. So we have basically have the name of the person, the group it belongs in, the timestamp, the camera that captured the picture, including the, the location of the camera. It also provides a thumbnail picture of the person and the option to watch a playback video of that, there's, of that person at the time of detection by clicking on the play icon to the right. So one scenario this searchable database can be useful is in a work setting where uh, time cards are still being used to track uh, an employee's time in attendance um, in a car factory, for example. And let's pretend there's an employee in this factory that is suspected of time card fraud, such as a coworker punching in uh, their time card for them to uh, cheat on attendance. So now the employer can use the data magnet database as an investigative tool and perform a search on the employee's time in attendance, as well as review the picture thumbnail and video for any discrepancies. And on that note, this concludes my presentation and I thank you for listening in. If you wanna learn more about the smart security solution, please go on our website, vivotech.com under solutions, select facial recognition, and go to the Face Me Security tab. On this page is uh, material that I covered in my presentation, including additional information about the solution. If you have any questions, please click on the sales inquiry button at the bottom of the page and fill out the, the form. Someone uh, from our sales team will then reach out to you. Thank you once again. Well, thank you, Archie. Uh, that's a great presentation. I think it was uh, very much in depth uh, to, to give everyone a good understanding of what VAS2 uh, and Realtek's camera, along with um, you know, Cyberlink's uh, face me security can do. Um, it's not only just for the pandemic, right? I think there are use cases that do apply even after the pandemic, uh, especially on perimeter security and also visitor management uh, type of use cases. Um, thanks again. I think you know all those presentations were wonderful. I'd like to pass it on to, to Craig to host the, uh, the, the next uh, 10 minutes um, for the Q&A. Go ahead, Craig. Right. Thank you, Jay, and thank you, Pallas. Uh, everyone, that was a great presentation. We had a number of questions uh, posed by the attendees. I do have a few here that we want to have the panelists respond to. So if we could start off with VivoTech. 
what hardware or software licenses are necessary to make FaceMe work with VAS2? So, um, so one of the things that I've discussed during the, uh, the presentation is the data magnet interface. So b besides the, the, uh, the camera license, um, we, you basically need to purchase a data magnet license because this is the one that um, um, ingests the, the data that's coming from the CyberLink. Um, face me, um, uh, face me uh, security uh, uh, solution. Uh, software. So in this case, we we do need the the data magnet, as well as the the FaceMe security license. Great. So two licenses: data magnet and FaceMe security. Awesome. All right. Uh, next question is for Cyberlink. What makes FaceMe the world's top cross-platform AI facial recognition engine? Okay. Sure. Uh, I mean, there's many things. Uh, on top of the accuracy, which I mentioned in my segment of presentation, which places it in the top five in the world for those that can be uh, commercialized in countries outside of China, Russia, uh, it's edge-based, therefore very fast, very secure. Uh, it runs across a very large number of OS, so Android, iOS, Windows, several flavors of Linux, Jetson, so makes it uh, possible to install it on a pretty much any platform or even hybrid installations that have different platforms. Uh, it's also optimized. We have several uh, models. So the, the deep learning happens in different models, each of which uh, is optimized for different combinations of uh, power, speed, and accuracy. So no matter what kind of hardware you have, we have the best solution for you. And on top of that, we have unique features like the ability to do facial detection with very high accuracy when people are wearing masks. Uh, we have our true theater technologies that uh, enhance the quality of poor lighting or some cases, uh, low resolution cameras to remove bias. So when you bring it all together, there's literally no solution that comes close to uh, FaceMe. Okay, uh, another question, uh, VivoTech. I understand that FaceMe software re recommends using a two megapixel camera set to 1920 by 1080 stream. What if I have a three megapixel or higher resolution camera? Do I need to configure the stream to a lower resolution? So VivoTech cameras um, come with multiple streams. Some of them uh, three to four in this case. Um, stream one is typically used for FaceMe, right? So if you, let's say you have a three megapixel camera, you can set the the stream, the first stream, to uh, uh, um, to a two megapixel resolution, um, and uh, you're not really getting any you know performance boosts by you know by leaving it at three megapixel. So you can you can definitely leave it at two megapixel. But if you want to record on a higher resolution, then you can set let's say stream two to uh, three megapixel, and um, and and you can keep it and you can keep it that way at three megapixel. Great. All right, last question of the day. How can we try FaceMe? Yeah, very easy. On the handout and also uh, the list of names you had at the beginning, you have at the end, just contact us and uh, we have evaluation versions of FaceMe on the different platforms. We'll be more than happy to uh, let you try and experience uh, the, uh, the tool. Thank you, gentlemen. No more yeah. questions? All right, great. That's so yeah, thank you everyone for joining today's session again. I, I do want to, again, uh, thank our panelists as well. It was uh, great presentations. Uh, before I let everyone go, um, we, we do host a series of webinars um, every three to four weeks or so. So if you want to get uh, get information from us, you can obviously try to try to subscribe or um, or, or basically uh, join us on LinkedIn. Um, and then at the end of today's webinar, we, we will also show a slide which is identical to the, uh, to the handout that we actually uh, uploaded earlier. So you guys can actually take down some of the information by maybe take a screenshot. Um, so in the case when you guys wanna reach out to any of us, um, you, know, you can and we'll be definitely more than happy um, to respond back to you um, at our earliest convenience.
thank you very much, everyone. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you again in the uh, next uh, webinar that's hosted by Cyberlink. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.